Hop in, my friends. At about this time, we're normally back in our Harmon home base where Liz Duenas from Remax Diamond Realty joins us each and every week. But this week, Liz, you are actually hosting us at your at business. Office, yes. And it is beautiful out here. We are mm -hmm. in East Agana, and you got a great place. Thank you. Okay, now the process of surveying is something that most people have heard of, mm -hmm. but I would venture to say very few people actually understand. So that's what we're covering today. Well, when we get a seller who comes in, the, nor the normal process is we would ask about the lot numbers and they would bring a map and we normally will, when we look at the map, we'll look at the shape of the lot, the location. We'll also look at the size of the lot. So if you bring this in to me today and you say, I want to sell this lot, this doesn't help me. I need to know what's the location. And then what I would do is also go on my um, government map and um, check out uh, where the site is because what would happen is we need to know where it is and here's uh, the government map for example and uh, I'm verifying the, the size of the lot and then I want to get more details so it'll show me the property so it's a great government uh, reference tool so if I click on that it'll show the lot number and this isn't privileged information this is absolutely no, it's, free it's for anybody online yes. oh. it'll show the lot number it'll show the size and then if I want additional information, it'll give me what did the government um, assess that for tax purposes. And then it'll also um, tell me the zone. However, you cannot rely. So for example, if it's commercial zone, you can't just rely on that. You'd have to verify. Because remember, this site is um, uh, uploaded by a vendor. Uh, and you'd have to go to the government just to verify the information. You can't. We had a situation where we had property that was listed with an M zone. And then when we went to the government to verify, it was actually agricultural zone. Mm -hmm. so, so to summarize to this point, even if you have a professionally produced and assembled survey by you know, trained and, and certified engineers, that's not always enough. It's not enough in terms of getting more information on the property. So in front of us, we have just a general map. When you have your maps, of course, you want the lot number, you want the reference to the size, you want to see has the map been signed. And then the next step is usually at the end of the process, uh, you don't hire a survey on the front end. When you get an offer, it'll normally state the purchase is subject to inspection of the boundary points approval and also a surveyor marking the points and you walking around and inspecting it. And um, so a surveyor would have to be hired to do that. And sometimes you would ask for an as-built. And uh, here's a, a sample of an as-built map. Right. An as-built map will give you reference. Where does the building sit in relationship to the lot? How many feet away is the uh, from the boundary point? So it'll give you much more detail in reference to the property. So if there's a storage shed, it'll show storage shed like that, for example, how many feet. Um, and this is a map of our building where we're at. Right and obviously, now. even though this is only on a flat piece of paper, the annotations within this also show you like everything, in three dimensions, elevation, every, depth. Everything regarding uh, the property. Uh, is it conforming? Is it within the guidelines of the zone for that particular uh, subject? Property? And then duly certified, as you can see and down there. And duly certified, exactly. Okay, so. so. So what we're gonna do is probably take you from here and I wanna show you a survey department. All right. Uh, and then also take you out and look at what are you looking for when you're inspecting the boundary points? Now I'm a big dork, so the one thing I like about this is the plotters. You guys yeah. have those huge plotters yes, that generate yes, this and everything. So yeah, so so can we actually go check out some actual yes, surveyors? Yes, and, we will. All right, so this is the theory. Let's go take a look at the practical department of survey. All right, here we are among the surveyors, and Nestor is the most senior of this group. Uh, Nestor, very good to meet you. Um, how many surveyors are there on Guam in total? Uh, there are about eight, including um, one government surveyor, at land management. Mm -hmm. What is the most difficult type of land to survey on Guam? Because we've got so many different types, you know, like various, you know, you could sit on top of limestone, you've got developed mm -hmm. properties already, you've got mm -hmm. completely undeveloped jungle. What, what's the most challenging? The most challenging is the retracement of boundaries. Mm. You know, we have to go through the original survey map that usually uh, uh, were prepared way way back uh, early uh, 20s you know mm -hmm. 1920s oh, and, so it's taking an old map, old map and yeah. trying to update map. it yeah mm -hmm. pedestal maps uh, of the island how yeah. often do you do that like how often do you have to update maps 
uh, it depends um, on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, owners because if they want to build a house, you know. Okay. Yeah, for like our purposes, yeah. surveyors would come in to mark the points yeah, for oh, the yeah. for the buyer, and then the buyer has to inspect those points to see it meets his approval, and then the the transaction can move forward. Once they see the points and that it fits exactly where they think the lot is, then we can move forward <coughs> with the transaction. It's usually a contingency in their purchase agreement. Okay. So even though your colleagues right now, a lot of them are entering data on the computer, they're doing like a lot of in office work right here. These are also the find men and women that also do like a lot of the field work so they go in they set up the equipment you know, we see them as we drive by them uh... Yeah. you know taking taking samples and you know taking data yeah yeah okay wow so you you guys are sealing the floor full service huh? yeah. <laughs> you can see right here she's plotting a map and she's using you know the best application for for plotting maps and she looks like she's very very happy with her work <laughs> <laughs> See, then there's, there's a nice big smile, yeah. So <laughs> obviously um, your, your colleagues very much enjoy what they do. Oh, yeah. they do, definitely. All right, so Liz, you were saying we can actually take a look outside yes, and take a look at some look survey at, points. What are you looking for? Are you, we tell people do not look at the row of coconut trees, do not look at rebars, because those don't mean anything. Right, right Nestor? Right, right. There is a cap that you have to look for, correct? Yeah, there, there's, um, um, uh, what do you want to do? Um, ID, surveyor's ID. Mm -hmm. There's and a number. I, I, I can show you. On, uh, we'll tell you what, let's go let's ahead and, let's go outside. Yeah, let's go ahead and head outside and actually right. take a look at some real life survey points. So, Jason, um, on the map, you'll see that these are boundary point markers right here. I see. Okay. Uh, so, he, uh, Chris here is one of the, uh, is in the survey department, and he's going to show us uh, one of these markers. Hey, okay, Chris. Okay, interesting. So they look like little, like little lifesavers, like little candies right. and everything. And, and these are actually placed strategically throughout the island and various properties. Yeah. So if your I've never noticed these. So if your property point, um, that's one of your property point, and there's a surveyor number. So right there, uh, number sixty-five, identifies which surveyor did the boundary point. Okay. So usually you would look for the shape of the lot and go from this point to the next boundary point. Mm -hmm. And then if the, sh if the lot is square, then you'd go from one point to the other just to ensure that all those points are in place. Do not look for ba uh, for rebars because rebars aren't your proper boundary point. You were just saying that. Now this I know some people are thinking um, for purposes of like when we get bad weather or typhoons, um, how are those things anchored to the ground? They're actually nailed in. Okay. Um, sometimes there's a wall in place. And they're very secure. And they're secure, yes. Okay. And sometimes there's a wall in place, and the surveyor will have to see uh, where it is and mm -hmm. place a, a, a marker, right, Chris? Yeah. They would place a marker uh, wherever that point is. So they're secure and they're also safe, so like people yes. obviously won't be able to trip over this, like a that's dog's right. not going to, you know, that's right. dig it up. or Okay, yeah, that's right. interesting. I've never seen these before. <laughs> well, this is what we look for. Uh, but again, we're not surveyors. We need the expert to come out and show those points. Okay. So as a buyer, they have to approve that they've seen it and they've met the contingency in their purchase agreement. All right, Liz, as always, we appreciate the information. I've learned a lot today, so thank you for having us here at Remax Diamond Realty Guam. We are in East Again. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, everybody, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.